coral reef, ridge, or hummock formed in shallow ocean areas by algae, and the calcareous skeletons of certain coelenterates, of which coral polyps are the most important. A coral reef may grow into a permanent coral island. Often called the rainforests of the sea, coral reefs are home to a spectacular variety of organisms. Structure. A coral reef is actually a complex of features, only part of which is a living coral or algal framework, although the other associated features result from this live segment. The accumulations of carbonate sand and mud provide a habitat for sea grasses and mangroves, and for almost inconspicuous blue-green algal mats. These plants and algae trap and stabilize sediment, and their accumulations are also accreted to the whole reef complex. Storms and surf heap up fragmental material into beaches and shoals, and the shoals may develop into low sandy or rubbly islets, or caves on top of the reef. Corals and other reef-building organisms. Coral polyps resemble sea anemones, to which they are closely related, but, unlike most anemones, most reef corals are colonial. Initial polyps divide themselves into daughter polyps, and they divide in turn, growing into colonies, that can be up to several meters in diameter, all held together in one continuous rigid calcareous skeleton. They remain attached to the seafloor, and become so large and heavy, that only storms disturb them. Under the right conditions, generally clear and well-circulating water that is not too rough, the corals grow profusely side by side, even on and over each other. The corals in effect build limestone, because their skeletons are made of calcium carbonate. Reef-building corals, chiefly the stony corals or sclerotinia, grow best in shallow sunlit water, between the low water mark and a depth of 11 meters, but they can still construct reefs in water as deep as 40 meters, and they may have a sparse existence between 40 and 55 meters. These corals prefer water of normal salinity with an annual maximum temperature above 22 degrees centigrade, but below 28 degrees centigrade. Their reef-building activities, however, may be carried on in waters whose minimum temperature in winter is not less than 15 degrees centigrade. A second group of corals in present-day seas grows in thickets and coppices that develop banks, rather than reefs on the outer, deeper, colder, and darker parts of continental shelves and platforms. These organisms flourish in water with a winter minimum temperature ranging between about 4 and 15 degrees centigrade at depths of about 60 to 200 meters. In any one thicket there are commonly only two genera of delicately branching corals involved. Such coral banks are known along the eastern Atlantic shelf edge from Norway to the Cape Verde Islands, and again off the Niger River Delta, and in the West Atlantic around the Gulf of Mexico, the Bahamas, and the Orinoco River Delta. Off New Zealand, such banks have been recognized on the Campbell Plateau and the Chatham Rise. They also occur in the Northwest Pacific near Japan. The third coral assemblage of the modern seas is associated with even colder or deeper seas. It consists of small solitary corals of relatively few genera, known from the abyssal floors of the oceans, and from the shelves around Antarctica, Patagonia, and the Falkland Islands in waters 2 to 6 degrees centigrade in temperature. Calcareous algae, mollusks, echinoderms, and protozoans also contribute to the reef. Different organisms have different reef-building roles. Some, especially the corals, provide the main structural framework of the growing reef, although in parts of the world such as the Central Pacific, where the surf is very strong, calcareous algae may be more important in the roughest places. Almost all shelly and calcareous organisms and those with spicules, such as sponges and sea cucumbers, provide fragments that wash into or fall into the gaps between corals. Other organisms, especially algae and protozoans, bind and cement everything together with sheet-like growth, orientation and arrangement. A typical coral reef generally faces the open sea. Seaward of it is the fore reef, descending into deeper water and floored deeper down by fragmental material derived from the reef. Behind the growing fore reef edge, which rises to about a mean high water level, is a shallow platform formed partly by a now dead area of reef framework, and partly of fragmental material and often colonized by seagrasses, algal mats, or mangroves. Patches of living frameworks occur intermittently. Caves may occur along with the platform, or the reef may terminate against the shore of a landmass. If there is no immediately adjacent landmass, the reef descends again into deeper water, generally more gently, on this, its leeward side. There are usually live reef frameworks on this slope too, but these are often irregular and patchy. Sedimentation. The reef becomes true rock by an almost imperceptible dissolution, redeposition, recrystallization, and chemical transformation of reef material. The shape of coral reefs, while at least in part due to the tendency of reef builders to grow upward and outward toward the prevailing winds and currents, is also the result of changes of sea level during the last two million years or more. Coral reefs that developed before the last glaciation was left above sea level, where they were eroded and subjected to solution weathering. 
As sea level rose again during the past 10,000 years, new reef growth mantled this older, drowned landscape but is still not masked it completely. Types of coral reefs. Coral reefs take four principal forms. First one, fringing reefs consist of flat reef areas that directly skirt an unreef island, often volcanic, or a mainland mass. The second one, barrier reefs are also close to a non-reef landmass, but lie several kilometers offshore, separated from the landmass by a lagoon or channel often about 50 meters deep. Some barrier reefs are more or less circular, surrounding an island, but larger barrier reefs, such as those along the Red Sea coast and Australia's Great Barrier Reef, are complex linear features consisting of chains of reef patches, some of them elongated into ribbon reefs. The third one, atolls are like circular barrier reefs, but without their central landmass. The fourth one, finally, there are platform, or patch, reefs, which have irregular table-like or pinnacle features. Smaller patches occur inside atoll lagoons. Larger patches occur as isolated parts of larger developments of any of the other three reef categories. They sometimes occur completely separate from other kinds of reefs. Origin and development of reefs, English naturalist Charles Darwin concluded in 1842, that barrier reefs began as reefs fringing the land around which they now form a barrier, and that oceanic atoll reefs began as reefs fringing a volcanic island. Subsidence of the land fringe was thought to allow the reef to grow upward. Maximum growth would occur at the seaward edge, and lagoons would develop between the ascending barrier, or atoll, reef in the land or volcanic cone. When the volcanic cone became completely submerged, the atoll lagoon would contain only coral islands. Fundamentally, Darwin's concept is still valid, although many consider submergence by the rise of sea level, following the melting of ice sheets that appeared during the Pleistocene epoch, to be a better explanation of the latest upward growth of many reefs, particularly on continental shelves. Mid-ocean stages of coral reef development are explained by plate tectonic theory, according to which the ocean floor subsides as it spreads outward from oceanic ridges. The Hawaiian Islands, with barrier reefs in the southeast grading to atolls in the northwest, is a good example of this. A reef whose surface lies above the high tide mark, either by uplift, or by eustatic regression of the sea, is subject to planning by marine erosion. If planning off is complete, a flat-top submerged platform results. If subsidence or eustatic submergence intervenes, a wave-cut terrace is left around the reef. Terraces that may have formed in this way are known around many reefs. Some annular reefs may develop without relation to subsiding volcanic cones. When reef platforms have been uplifted above sea level, they are subjected to subaerial erosion. Surface slope, or gradient, determines the amount of runoff, and is a prime factor in this erosion. Two secondary processes also are involved, the first point, case the hardening of steep, bare limestone surfaces by recrystallization caused by alternate wetting and drying, so that walls or knife-like edges result from weathering, and the second point, continuous subsoil solution, if surfaces are nearly horizontal, and runoff is diminished. These processes combine to produce a prominent rim, and a saucer-shaped interior in emerged limestone islands. With submergence, algal and coral growth resumes, the fastest growth being on the rim, and on any pinnacles, that may be left. Thus, an atoll or annular reef may develop along the rim around the low-lying central region, which becomes a lagoon, and coral knolls grow on former pinnacles in the lagonal area. Threats to coral reefs A number of forces threaten the survival of coral reef organisms, as well as the structural integrity of the reefs themselves. Many coral reefs are plagued by predatory species, bleaching, and the effects of various human activities. Crown of thorns starfish, certain biological factors, such as the fish and invertebrates that feed on the soft tissues of reef builders and the organisms that bore into coral rock, may contribute to the destruction of coral reefs. One of the most destructive creatures known as Acanthister plancy, the crown of thorns starfish, which during the 1960s multiplied spectacularly and removed the soft tissues from large areas of many reefs in the Southwest Pacific. A plancy feeds by everting its stomach and liquefying and absorbing the tissues of the corals. By the late 1970s, it had become apparent, however, that the sudden spread of A. plancy was part of the organism's natural life cycle, and that the coral reefs could regenerate rapidly after such an infestation. Coral rock borers include boring algae, boring sponges, various polychaete and sapunculid worms, and many bivivs and a few gastropods. These organisms usually penetrate the rock mechanically, but in some cases do so chemically. Extensive damage is caused both by their own activities, and by the assistance they give to the erosive action of the sea. So, today we are talking about some details about coral reefs. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more videos.